how to use masking fluid. In this video, we're going to look at 10 mistakes that you might be making that mean you're not getting the results that you want. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find art tips and techniques, particularly watercolour and mixed media, and you'll also find business and social media training for artists, so please do subscribe and if you click the little bell notification, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. So have you ever got in a big old mess while using masking fluid and has it ruined one of your paintings or have you just been really disappointed with the results? Well, I think it's happened to all of us. So what happens is I get beginners come into my class and usually another member of the class, another student will tell them about masking fluid and suddenly they think it's the answer to all their problems. There's this stuff that can reserve white paper, they can put whatever paint they want on top of it, um, rub it off at the end and they're going to have these nice white spaces reserved. But the reality is that it's a little bit tricky to use and they just need to know a few tricks and that there are lots of mistakes that can be made. They're really, really simple mistakes to avoid. I'm going to tell you about 10 of them today and one of them I would say amounts to probably 60% of the mess that I see students getting into. So let's get on with learning about these 10 mistakes so that you can avoid them in the future. Mistake number one involves shaking or not shaking your masking fluid. So here's my pot of masking fluid. Now, if I don't shake it, there's a chance that it may have separated and there's dye in this. So um, if it's separated for a long time, if it hasn't been used for a long time, sometimes it can separate out and you can end up staining your paper with a certain color, the color of the masking fluid. The other thing that can happen is if you shake it too vigorously, you can get a load of bubbles in it, makes it really hard to apply. So what you should do is rather than shaking it vigorously, is just either sort of swill it like this or just upend it. So before you use it, you want to just give it a gentle agitation, but no harsh shaking and make sure that you move it around a little bit before you start applying it. Mistake number two, are you using your best brush to apply your masking fluid? Well, you won't do it twice because it'll ruin your brush. Now there are lots of different applicators for masking fluid and that's the subject of another video. So do subscribe because I will make other videos about how to apply masking fluid. And I'll do a comparison as well as the different tools that you can use. So there are several different types of tools and there are specialist brushes that you can use for applying masking fluid. But what you don't want to do is use your best brushes because it'll almost certainly never come out. Mistake number three, you probably already know this one, but the trouble is it requires patience and we all want to prod at things when they're still wet, don't we? So um, this is just about following the let it dry rule. So in other words, at every stage of using masking fluid, you must let things dry. Now masking fluid can't just be used on, uh, on dry paper. It can also be used on top of a layer of paint. So you can reserve the color underneath. You do sometimes get a little bit of pigment lifting, so you want to experiment with that, but you certainly can use it to to reserve an underneath layer of paint but of course you must make sure that paint is dry and I don't mean dry for five minutes I mean bone dry so don't apply it to paint or to paper that's wet because the surface is porous and fragile and the masking fluid will sink in too much and you're going to have difficulty getting it off and guess what that means that means torn paper now the second stage of that once the masking fluid has applied is you must let the masking fluid dry because if you paint on top of it while the masking fluid is still wet you're going to pick some of it up and again you're going to ruin your brush and the third time you need to let it dry is of course once you've applied the paint now it's really easy to think it's dry or hope it's dry and start rubbing the masking fluid off when the paint's still wet. Now be especially careful with this because sometimes the paint around the outside of the masking fluid is dry, but because the masking fluid itself is less porous than the paper, you may get little beads of wet paint that sit on top of the masking fluid areas and they take longer to dry than the rest and you start to rub off. Now what happens if you rub off and part of it's not dry? Well, if there's paint on top of the masking fluid, you're gonna smudge that paint into the white areas it's reserved. And if the paint put around it is still wet, then you're going to tear your paper. So the fourth mistake comes in how you remove the, uh, the masking fluid itself. Now, everything may be dry, everything may be fine, but are you sort of picking at the masking fluid? Are you grabbing the masking fluid and pulling it straight up in little strings? It's very satisfying, isn't it? Unfortunately, 
it's a good way to tear your paper as well. With anything that you remove from your paper, this regards um, tape as well as masking fluid, you don't want to pull it up at a high angle. The higher the angle you pull it um, to the paper, if you're pulling it right up at a right angle, in other words, if you're pulling it vertically up from the paper, it's likely to tear your paper. You want to remove it at a low angle. And the best way of removing masking fluid is to just rub gently in circles. Now, I don't advise using your fingers because our fingers have got oil in. The best way to remove it, I found after years of experimentation, is just to use a firm putty rubber. You can also, also buy special tools for this. They're almost like plastic erasers, but you don't need them. I mean, they're great, but you can also just use a firm rubber and little circles to gently remove your masking fluid. Don't pick at it and don't pull it straight up. Masking fluid mistake number five is simply leaving it on your paper for too long. So what's a good amount of time to leave your masking fluid on your paper? Well, as little time as possible, really. Apply it, let it dry, paint on top of it, let it dry. Remove it as early on as you can in the painting process. The most I would leave it on for would be a few days. Now, you know, we all have lives that, uh, that you know, sometimes things unexpected just happen, you know, and we're quite, you know, we're planning to do our painting the next day and then something happens and suddenly we have to travel for work or something like that or family problems and all of a sudden it's two weeks, a month before we touch that painting again. Now, if something like this happens and you know that you're not going to get straight back to your painting, just remove the masking fluid that's on there and then reapply it later on. Don't leave masking fluid on your paper for weeks or months. You're going to find it becomes far too attached and when you try and take it off, it's going to take part of your paper with it. Mistake number six has not happened to me personally, but I've heard plenty of anecdotal evidence about it and it just makes sense. Don't use a hairdryer on your watercolour painting if you've got masking fluid on. Obviously, it's liquid rubber. It's going to cause some kind of chemical change to it and it's likely to become a lot more attached to your paper. So please avoid using a hairdryer. I mean, I don't like the use of hairdryers in watercolour paintings anyway. I'm sure they dull the pigments. That's just, uh, just something I've noticed. But certainly if you've got, uh, you know, if you do use a hairdryer regularly, if you've got masking fluid on your paper, I suggest you don't do that. So at number seven, we don't have a mistake as such, but we just have something that I've noticed that can sometimes lead to problems. So here's my masking fluid and it's in a little bottle and I'll apply it with an applicator. But some masking fluids come with a built-in applicator. Now there are two possible problems with this. Problem number one is that the nozzle easily gets blocked. I mean, a lot of them have sort of a pin that you put in, but they do tend to block up because at the end of the day, it's liquid rubber and it sets in contact with air. So blocked nozzles are going to be a problem. The second mistake with this one is that it just doesn't apply in a very naturalistic manner. It tends to come out too thick, too fast, and um, you just don't get that beautiful hand, um, hand applied effect if you're applying it with a nozzle where hopefully it comes out you know, in one even line. So that's just something to be careful of. Now, I'm not here to tell you not to do something that's working for you. If you've got a particular brand, a particular brand with a nozzle applicator and you love using it and it gives you the results that you want, then carry on um, you know, as you were, stand down, don't worry about it. But this is just something that I have observed with my students, that the ones with applicators don't often work as well as the ones that come in a little tub that you apply by hand. So number eight, I see very often when teaching students, and this is just applying it really, really carelessly. Now, it forms a very distinct mark, very hard edge shapes. And if you just slap it on in any old manner, it's a bit like when you do wax resist and you just scribble the crown on in any old manner. And then, you know, the shapes that appear afterwards, you think, well, that doesn't look very good. Well, that's what's going to happen. So I just want you to think really carefully about the result that you're looking for and apply the masking fluid with great care. Because once it's done, once those, um, you know, once the masking fluid is rubbed off and you get those hard edged marks left, you're going to have to live with them. So don't just slap it on. It needs applying with a very, very careful touch. So number nine is just using it for the wrong things. It's completely overused in my opinion. Now I'm not here to say don't use masking fluid because um, you know, I'd be a hypocrite, I use it myself all the time. But there's a kind of a, a belief with watercolour painters that it's the only way of reserving your paper. It certainly isn't. There are many other ways of reserving light areas in your paper. And if you have shapes that are very soft edged, then the last thing that you want to do is use masking fluid. So masking fluid is very suitable 
for tiny lines and for crisp edged shapes. You know, if you've got a little flower bed with lots of little bright, you know, daisies in the foreground, that's fabulous. If you're splattering to get tiny pebbles on a beach, you know, little round pebbles, that's great too. Um, tiny, tiny window frame on a little distant house, great use of masking fluid. But there are many other times when masking fluid just isn't suitable and it's just too harsh and too hard edged. One of the mistakes that I made, I'll try and find a painting, a picture of the painting and put it up uh, actually on this video. One of the things that I did was um, I, I hadn't been painting that long and I made a beach painting and I decided to use masking fluid to, uh, to depict the waves crashing onto the shore. It just didn't work. It's far too hard edged for waves and for, uh, you know, for soft things like that. So before you use masking fluid, ask yourself, is it really appropriate? Are you trying to pick out very, very sharp edged things? If not, then it's not the right thing to use to reserve the lights in your painting. Now, of all the things that beginners do wrong with masking fluid, one of them outweighs the other by a mile. I see people on, um, on forums and groups on Facebook saying, well, I've torn my paper. Why did the masking fluid tear my paper? And, um, you know, it happens to my own students all the time. There are all these mistakes I've already spoken about, but there's one that beginners make and um, amateur artists make more than any of the other mistakes put together. And what is that? It's simply applying masking fluid to too large an area. Masking fluid was never ever designed to block out great swathes of your paper. Again, I'm not here to tell you that something that's working for you is not good. You know, these things are so variable. It depends on the paper type. It depends on the masking fluid brand. It may even depend on the levels of dryness or humidity in the country and the area where you live. So if you have done this, if you've got masking fluid and paper and it's working for you, you know, don't put in the comments, well, it works for me. If it works for you, keep doing it. That's absolutely fine. But I can tell you that for the majority of people, applying masking fluid to a big area of paper is going to end in tears. It's going to end with the paper tearing as you take it off. Masking fluid is meant for picking out tiny, tiny fine details, things like the stamens on a flower centre, a tiny window frame, you know, a little fence post in the distance, things like that. It is not meant for blocking out great chunks of white paper. And if you try and do it with the masking fluid, you're probably going to tear the paper when it comes off. So I'm always willing to learn new tips about uh, masking fluid or any other art technique. So if you have something uh, that you know that I haven't mentioned, or perhaps something that you think will help other people, do leave your experiences of using masking fluid below. And if you're having trouble more generally with watercolour painting, if you're just finding you're making a ton of mistakes, I've got a really good video for you. It goes through 10 most common watercolour mistakes and shows you how to fix them even after it's dried on the paper. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you can watch that video right now.